you did over 240 episodes, you know, you did a lot. So I don't expect you to remember sort of individual episodes necessarily, but what were the kind of storylines you liked to get your teeth into? Yeah, I mean, there's one that immediately comes to mind, but of course I can't remember the the name of it, but it was dealing with this really sinister um, character who I, I think it was, I think it was a serial rapist. I think he was a serial rapist. It was very, very intense. And there was a lot of interview scenes, interview room scenes with him that I, I just loved doing them. That episode was actually used as an example episode that they sent out to new directors. I think it might have been James Halls who directed it. Boy Meets Girl? Boy Meets that. Girl. That sounds right. I think that's it. Lloyd Owen. Yeah. Lloyd Owen. I mean, he's brilliant. He's brilliant. Yeah. And I loved working with him. And I just thought it was a really good intense sort of acting experience I don't know what it looked like as well it must have been pretty good otherwise they wouldn't have used it as an example episode but yeah one that I really loved and uh, you get top billing in that episode which I think is always nice for an actor do I (laughs) yeah I didn't know about that you get top billing quite a lot in your time and not some people never got top billing in a bill you know really yeah I didn't know that um I mean I had a you know sort of uh, there were some writers who wrote some really nice stuff for me. I was very, you know, I feel uh, we we had some lovely writers on there. There was one writer that used to write quite dark, off, slightly offbeat episodes. Peter J. Hammond. PJ Hammond. PJ Hammond. Yeah. Well yeah. done. You're good. You're good. <laughs> yeah, we're good. <laughs> yeah, PJ he's Hammond. a superb writer. Every PJ Hammond episode I loved. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he was something special. Really? Sapphire and Steel, he created as well, and yeah, yeah, and and I mean, what it's funny um, because they don't know the bill the billeton celebrate classic episodes of the bill every day on Twitter, and by coincidence today they don't they don't know. Although I, I sent them a little tease earlier today, they're celebrating Game of Two Halves, where Susie goes back into uniform. Oh, I love that! I did <laughs> love that episode. I, re- I really are they. I really did love that episode. One of the things that I most loved about that episode was being in the uniform. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I loved being in the uniform. Yeah, really weird things I remember about that. Uh, I really loved the weight of the belt around uh, my hips. It made me feel like really empowered. <laughs> yeah. And the hat. And um, yeah, I loved that. And I lo- there was a moment where I have a fight with a guy. That's right. Uh, actually, I tackle him. And we're on the in his bedroom, I think, on his bed, and then he escapes. And and um, I don't know. We just managed to choreograph that really well, so it looked. I loved. I loved that. It, yeah. it looked realistic. I thought it was great. Yeah, no, it was, I liked that episode. Yeah, it was good. And nice for you, uh, yeah, paired of Clive Wedderburn and like to to actually get to meet because I suppose with with CID and uniform is often a divide, but, yeah. but for, for the cast, I suppose you all were one. Were you all one family? Did you get the social oh, yeah. lines of luck? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there was a big green room that we all hung out in, you know, so if uh, CID and uniform didn't cross a lot work-wise, but, you know, yeah, there were absolutely, you know, people that that I, you sort of hung, I hung out with in the in the green. Lisa Gagan, I shared a dressing room with Lisa. Love Lisa. Um, absolutely gorgeous. So, yeah, we had quite, a, you know, a, a lovely friendship going there we shared a dressing room very well together and then Lita Lolita Chakrabarti came and joined us later so we had this like really uh, great sort of dressing room going on so be in the green room and then in the pub so we'd all you know we'd go on to the pub after a shoot or whatever if there was uh, if, if we'd finished in time and so you know the people who'd hang who'd come and have a drink that in those days but um like Tom Butcher and uh, Andy Paul who again I was a bit in love with Andy Paul <laughs> But he was very, very, very married to a very, very, very beautiful lady. There was just sort of little, you know, uh, teenage, and not teenage quite, because I was in my 20s, but um, they go, kind of, oh, you were lovely. Um, I said, Andy Paul used to have a great laugh with him. Brilliant. So, yeah, there was a lot of kind of green room and in the pub. You said earlier you, you, you felt you took yourself very seriously, but it sounds like you were having a great time as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just sound like we're having a good time. I think we did have a good time. We were very much a, I, I think we were very much a family. And do you know what I think uh, was really special about the about the actors on? Well, no, the bill, everyone actually, the crew and uh, and everyone. 
everyone on the bill, the team, the whole team, you know, costume, makeup, the runners, uh, props guys. I, I, the whole thing was a family, really. Everyone looked after each other. And I, something I think is very special that you don't always get when you go in as a visiting actor is that we were very, very careful of our visiting actors. So when our visiting actors came in, we made or try to really make sure that they felt comfortable with us, that they got to, you know, we run lines, have a laugh, have a coffee together, have, that they felt, I hope they all felt really cared for by us. Because I think we were very aware that we were doing this dawn till dusk every day. We're very familiar, we're very comfortable. We could easily have a big laugh before we do a take and all of that. But then you've got a visiting actor coming in and it can be a very intimidating experience that coming into an established group of actors who are chatting just before a take. So I think we were all always very, very careful to be really um, embracing and supportive of our visiting actors. And now when I look back, I, I mean, I thought we had amazing visiting actors anyway, but sometimes now I look back and go like, gosh, and they really made it. <laughs> they really, those actors really took off. David Tennant, you had a great, storyline with Matt. Well, that was massive at the time I remember watching at my nan and granddad's house because it was like trailed on every ad break in between <laughs> every other show yeah. that story you know amazing I mean we had amazing visiting. we did have amazing visiting actors we did mm. extraordinary I mean I could now that like so many people are just popping into my my head as we're speaking yeah very very lucky at the time it all just felt part of the job it's funny you just you kind of just take it all in your stride at the time it's now when you look back and you, you think, gosh, no, we were, we were, we're really lucky. And also what a loss it is. Oh, what a loss. It's, 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 uh, it's, you know, it won the BAFTA for best continuing drama and then got axed. It was like, what have you, you just done? It was a stupid, stupid decision. Stupid oh. decision. A really stupid, I don't understand why they did that. It, I, when you think about it, I mean, I always think, like this was such a major employer. It was yeah. such a major employer, not just the regulars, but all the young directors that came through and learned their craft there. And the same with the first AD, second ADs, but all the people you meet in the business now who learned the ropes at the bill under really established, amazing people who knew the job backwards. Writers, young writers coming in, cutting their teeth there, actors, yeah. A whole range of visiting actors, so many visiting actors. Well, when I was there three times a week, huge yeah. employer, huge employer. I suppose, like, um, and you've done five of these now. I, I feel Doctors is the, like, the last sort of remnant of like the half hour format that the bill had, where you'd, and you'd, a guest actor would be able to go back yeah, quite yeah, regularly yeah. to yeah. do. Yeah, I think, roles, I, think I, mean. I go back every couple of years. I think. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I think they have to leave like a two-year gap. and So I'm coming up for another one, I think. <laughs> yeah, you, you'll be due, yeah. I mean, you've, you've played everything from a, a chocolatier to a, a police officer and, yeah, yeah. And, and the powerhouse businesswoman. <laughs> having I love how you know my career better than me. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just need to get out more, I think. <laughs> Doctors is very similar, actually, in a way, to the bill, in that they really look after you as well, because they have lots of visiting actors coming in, and they're really supportive and really, they're a really lovely bunch. Really, I love it when I go back to Doctors. Yeah, yeah, they're mm. great. They're really fab. Now, what are your memories of of this? <laughs> 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 oh, the panto, the panto shoot, where we did that in Brighton, wasn't it Brighton? We went to, I think, yeah. Yeah. And we all stayed. <laughs> we all stayed in a hotel there. All of us. Can you imagine? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> all of us staying in a hotel in Brighton. And you know, to say that we did it sober would be an absolute <laughs> lie. <laughs> 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 so uh, I don't really remember very much about the episode. I do remember. I don't think I can't blame Derek Cotty. Who was it? <laughs> One of the production managers saying, Kerry can't wait to wear that. She looks like Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> it's because of my hair. Because I had, uh, my hair was much longer then. I don't, I don't know, whatever. Something I was wearing. Uh, 
made my hair like this. She, she, she looks like Darth Vader. The, uh, the rest of it was largely getting your bits squishy in the bars. That's, that's what I remember about that. Ray Ashcroft recalls Ben Roberts holding court uh, in the bar. Oh, well, that's not unusual then, Ben. Yeah. Again, Ben was somebody that I knew from uh, Nottingham Playhouse. Before I went to drama school, I worked at Nottingham Playhouse for uh, a year. And Ben was somebody who worked, he's from the Midlands, and he, he, he was somebody who worked at Nottingham Playhouse on a regular basis. So I worked with Ben quite a lot over the course of that year. And um, uh, so we had, <laughs> we had a, a very intimate uh, relationship in that dressing room, me and Ben. Right. <laughs> I'm his dresser and you can imagine how Ben was <laughs> with 20 year old me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, while you're down there, Kerry. <laughs> <laughs> that was absolutely Ben. <laughs> he was so cheeky. He's so naughty and, and such a big heart of gold. And when I joined the bill, I mean, he absolutely took to me under his wing, you know, when I went in as a regular and uh, took the mick out of me mercilessly, bringing up all those dressing, you know, my I was his dresser stories. And um, yeah, he was an absolute swine and I loved him to pieces. And he's gone too soon, far too soon. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it must... <laughs> that... <laughs> Just thinking Ben holding court. That's so, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they're all character. I, I, I think that... I mean, this is the era of the bill I grew up loving and watching. You know, this was like watching as a family with my mum and dad or dad yeah. and my nan and granddad, you know. And... It shows on screen as well, I feel, that you are all a family and it's a really solid lineup. Oh, God. I mean, it felt when we had the fi the rap part, the final rap party. I mean, it, yeah. it was really serendipitous, this. But as I arrived, because I'd left the bill for quite some time then, I'd had Thomas and um, my son. And uh, as I arrived for the final rap, party, all those that that era we were all arriving at the same time. I mean, it was just, it was just glorious. So Steve Beckett, you know, so sort of, uh, Andy Mack, Tom Butcher, Lisa, uh, Lolita, all of us, this, uh, the whole kind of gang of that era, were all turning up at the same time. And some lucky fans who were waiting outside got that, uh, got that shot, post, got group shot, yeah, of, of the whole lot of us. And yeah, it was just amazing to see them all again, because you just say, like, yeah, Andrea, I'd not seen since I'd finished on the bill. Andrea Mason, since I'd finished on the bill. And I was there when she'd started and, uh, you know, sort of she evolved into such an incredible character. And, yeah, just, got so many memories. Uh, Trudy couldn't be there, but she sent, you've probably heard this before, but she sent us a video message from Glastonbury. <laughs> her daughter was before me. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so she sent us all a message. Yeah, so it was... It was we were we were really tight and really supportive of each other, really supportive of each other. I mean, obviously, in you know, over a long period of time, there are moments where people fall, are falling down a little bit, you know, from yeah. exhaustion or things that are going on in their personal lives or just normal human stuff. And er everyone whole, held each other up, you know. Mm. Uh, mm. Yeah. It must have been a very difficult show to leave. It was, it was really difficult. Um, it, it, it was Andrew's fault, really. Andy, Andy Mack. <laughs> it's, it's his fault, really, that, that I left. I, I'd kind of been thinking for a long time. Because uh, initially, the first, couple of, the first couple of years, I think it was just great getting comfortable in front of a camera and really knowing, you know, really knowing what you were doing. I thought that was a great thing. And then... After the first couple of years, then I started to get really interested in the other side, in, um, you know, watching the directors and the camera guys. And, yeah, so I was in, interested in the technical side. And then Andy and I set up a little tiny, weeny production company called Big Week. <laughs> and um, I decided that I wanted to go off and do a BBC director's course that I wanted to learn the other side. Cool. And, um, oh, 
you're hearing it all now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so I went to the producers and said, look, I think I'd like to, to go off and do this. I mean, they were amazing. They were amazing. I, I had no idea just how lucky we had it there, honestly. So uh, they let me take... <laughs> I can't believe they did this. I can't imagine a production company would do this now. They let me take a three-month sabbatical. So I went off and I didn't do the uh, BBC director course because Andy had been talking to some high-up police people at some function he'd been to and was talking about this little production company that we were putting together. And we had a storyline uh, in mind that we wanted to do and everything was something that my then uh, partner had written it's very good so we were going to work on doing that but he'd been talking to these people and said well we've set up a little production and they said would you like to make a we're looking actually for someone to make a uh, corporate video for us it's not my proudest moment um but not because of you know the actors and not because of the shots we use not because of my crew not because of anything like that but because it was the first thing i'd ever done so, <laughs> so it was a little bit lacking in directorial flair but it was <laughs> An amazing experience. So instead of doing the course, I I did this. Andy had got us this job, but he's still working on the bill. He hasn't got a sabbatical. <laughs> so I had to, I'm given a budget. So the police gave us like a 10 grand budget and said, like, there you go, produce, direct. And I'm like, wow. oh, that'll be me then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's where I started. Uh I put a thing on my, I had a computer, very early computer owner, had a thing on my computer there, of course we didn't have internet, <laughs> there that said, feel the fear and do it anyway. You know that old cliche? Because I was yeah. with everything. So yeah, so then I, I had lists, you know, I, of course I pulled in um, people off the bill, you know, cameraman um, and sound. Uh, I pulled people in from there, from the bill to do it with me. And they told me what I needed, equipment wise. So I set about, you know, booking the equipment, booking the venues, booking the location, doing all that, <laughs> pulling in all my actor mates again, you know, to play yeah. the parts and do all of that. Produced it, kind of directed it. Well, I did direct it, but I'm not sure how well I did that. But yeah, and once I'd done that, because my brain had been busy for those three months, like going like Ugh, crazy busy and then editing, and, and I'd been really. I felt like my brain really woke up in a different sort of way. And I went back to work. And I just felt in the, that morning when we were shooting, and it might have just been, an, I don't know, maybe it was an unfortunate episode to go back in on, I can't remember. But I went back in and I just sort of felt like a bit of my brain just went me. Right. And um, wow. yeah, I just didn't feel excited anymore. And so in the tea break, I called my agent. This is how, like, impulsy I am, <laughs> doing things on impulse. In the tea break, I called my agent and said, can you get me out of my contract? I don't want to be here anymore. And um, I was in the middle of a three-year contract. The producers obviously wanted to talk to me. I had a bit of a chat with them, and, and uh, they wanted to make sure that I was sure and everything. And I said, yeah, I, I really am. I really feel like I need to do something different uh it's not because i don't love it here i just mm. need something different and pat again pat pat really kind of championed me and said you know you are a proper actress carrying you will do off go off and you will do proper actress things and you have spent longer than you ever intended to here i think we should back her and that was it wow. so they said we'd need six months we need we do need we need six months to be able to write you out so so that was it. And then by the time I left, I found out that I was pregnant with my son, Tom. <laughs> oh. Oh, wow. So during that six months, which is really interesting because we had been trying for a baby, but um, it had not been happening. And I don't know whether that bit in my brain somewhere that went, now you can relax or something. Yeah. But yeah, I got pregnant during those six well during the last three months of of the um i was about three months pregnant when i left <laughs> crazy well in a way i suppose that was a good thing because it's hard you know after five years on a show like to, to, for that change in routine but if you're expecting a, a baby then that's just a whole new mindset anyway isn't it so completely but i had i didn't go off and kind of do the things that i planned on pursuing i just went off and yeah. went oh my god I <laughs> 
<laughs> and it, funny enough, actually, because I didn't know I was pregnant. So it must have been about six weeks. I didn't know yet. I hadn't realised. I just thought, oh, I'm a bit late or whatever, you know. But they needed me to go back in, I think, to pick something up. So they would have the Christmas break or whatever. And I went back in to do these pickups or something. And I put my costume on and the trousers were really tight. And I'm like, oh, I must have like really been eating over Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when it first occurred to me. I thought, like, oh, maybe I'm pregnant. And I did a test. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, crazy. So, yeah, so it was a kind of weird decision, I suppose. It was I'm quite impulsive. Yeah. But in a way, like that, that experience of, of directing that, uh, you know, corporate and trying that in a way you're has planted the seed for now when you can do both and you can write and create your own TV series. You know, I think it was probably always in me that there. my friends weren't surprised. Like when I said, would you come and do this corporate? with me and as I say don't look it up because I think I really did a, not a brilliant job but not because of everyone else I'm, and I have to emphasize that it was just yeah directorial choices when maybe I learned from that but yeah I think that well I think that was always in me but then it just kind of it became latent uh when I had Thomas then it all you know my life became all about Thomas and my um, I don't like calling them my stepkids because they're my kids and my grandchildren now from those kids, Natalie and Carl. So it kind of all became about the family. Uh, I still worked, but much more the focus was there. Mm. Yeah, but it was kind of always there. In a way. And it wasn't that long before you joined Brookside, you know? No, it wasn't actually. No, um, Thomas was, uh, yeah, I, I think he was about two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so it, wasn't, like... no, it wasn't long. No, that's, that doesn't happen for everyone to leave a long running show to then get into another long running show. You know, no, it's... no I know. I know. I mean, really. And, and so local as well. That yeah. was It's just a drive for me. It was like a half hour drive to work. Yeah, I know. That was really that was really, really lucky. And I met some amazing people on that show as well. Sometimes I forget that I did it. Well, it's, it's I was going to ask, like, you know, because you recently did a nice little stint on Corey. I mean, do you still pinch yourself when you suddenly, oh, I'm working in a Rover's Return. Do you still get moments like that as like a, as you know? So you pinch... Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I grew up with Coronation Street. You know, that was like, we'd come home from school, we'd have our tea, Corey on the telly. You know, that was, absolutely grew up with Coronation Street. And, um, and, and also all my family, yes, you know, you said like, what are they thinking about you? I'm like, I don't think they think that much about me being an actor, really. But always, when are you going to do Coronation Street? When are you going to do Coronation Street? Why don't you go, why don't you go on, why don't you join Coronation Street? Like as if you can just... Just join my gym, you know. <laughs> I'm all right then. Yeah, no, I'll do that. I'll join Coronation Street. Uh, yeah, so when I did, uh, when I went in, uh, I did Coronation Street, everyone's really pleased and wanted me to be a regular and stay uh, but also walking onto this like those things walking onto the set onto the street I was just like oh my god look at this here we are on the act I'm in the rover's return yeah <laughs> yeah no it felt massive it was massive it was extraordinary I, I was like a fan you know it was I was like a fan there and I couldn't quite believe, you know, that I was I'm sitting talking to like these actors who've been on it for ever. Oh my god. Yeah, no, it was amazing. Yeah, I loved it. And I think it's a shame that well, of course it's a shame for so many reasons that COVID hit. That goes without saying, doesn't it? But um they tried to work more episodes in, but I was already booked for a after I did the initial, I can't remember how many I did now. You probably know better than me. I think you did like nine, nine. Oh, nine Five, nine, five, nine, something like that. <laughs> so after I did those initial apps, they tried to book me in for more episodes, but I was already booked for a theatre uh, job. So that couldn't, they tried to work it, but it wouldn't work out. And then, of course, COVID came. That's it. And, you know, so if, I don't know if she'll come back. Yeah, but that was a shame because the, they were sort of talking about, you know, possibly bringing her in for more and 
yeah we'll see what happens we'll see what happens yeah. further on the line you never know you never know is, but yeah. is there a is there a dream job or a dream series you'd like to add to your resume <laughs> accidental <laughs> guru of course <laughs> Accidental Guru, my own series where I get to employ all of my amazing actor friends and bring other amazing actor friends and actors that I've worked in to do guest parts. And that, that's the dream, isn't it? Dream team. Other than that, if you're talking about, you know, um, what's already out there. It might be a kind of written by thing or sort of pretty much anything written by Sally Wainwright, probably, or Paul <laughs> Abbott. Yeah. So I think, it, yeah, it might be kind of more of a written by thing. Uh, if I got to be involved in Pamela Adlin's next series of uh, Better Things in America with her, that would be, we are talking dream jobs, right, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then that would be, I think that would be a fairly amazing thing um if i got to be play the personal assistant of jessica lang and <laughs> sam shepherd in some fantasy drama that would be quite good yeah how about star trek get you a star trek no oh, how do you know that about me <laughs> i know a you... fellow trekkie when i see one uh, I'm a huge Star Trek. I'm a yeah. huge Star Trek fan. I was so jealous as a uh, uh, Jason Isaac, who was in our year at oh, drama school. Yes, he got to play the pretending captain. Yeah, <laughs> ages, and I didn't know he was doing it. He came on, and I was like, oh, no, <laughs> no, yeah. are you on it? Uh, oh, absolutely. And I worked with Marina Sirtis. I did a, um, a, a casualty, a casualty special with Marina Sirtis years ago. This was just after the I finished on the bill, I think. I think I've done a casualty hall B city uh, combination where the hospital burns down and everything. But I don't think Marina was in that one. I think it was another one, casualty, a casualty special, but I can't remember what the story that was. I know I had a son that was missing, but I don't know what Marina was doing. I've been a life, I'm a lifelong Trekkie fan. And there's Marina. Sitting <laughs> next to me having coffee, chewing the fat. I I'm love like, it. Yeah. <laughs> Again, yeah, absolute professionalism left the room and the big fan arrived. <laughs> like, oh, I can't believe I'm working with you. Yeah, I just don't know. Would I do Star Trek? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would I do Star Trek if let's, they offered? Let's manifest <laughs> it. Let's let's. I think you need to be leaving yourself, uh, leaving your friend voicemails. Time. But yeah, you yeah. are the next Vulcan commander of the Enterprise. Completely, you know. and that would be my favourite thing to be. If I was going to be anything, I'd absolutely choose to be a Vulcan. Yeah, completely. you'd be an awesome because Vulcan. They look so cool, don't they? they yeah, look. I love that. That the whole look is so cool. I like those eyebrows. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I'm really good. I can do both hands, live long and prosper. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get my vote. Let's make it happen. <laughs> Let's manifest it. Although the thing about women are pretty cool as well, aren't they? Oh Half yeah, the when women are pretty kind of yeah, yeah. I could. <laughs> well, that's the exciting thing nowadays. If like if Star Trek can come back why not the bill and how could the bill be reimagined you know for like it is you know, back isn't it well isn't apparently it? apparently it's uh having a spin-off but you know i i'm not, i don't know the details of that i've only seen a little bit you know i've seen because people loads of people have said to me so you're going to be in it you're going to be in it i'm like i don't think so i think they're mm. kind of doing a you know new young crew mm. uh of the bill and bringing in uh i, I think maybe i read Trudy, Mark, and Jeff. A Graham, um, yeah. Oh, Graham, is it Graham? Sorry, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just bringing in like a sort of a few of the yeah. old gang. Yeah, you could, be, you could be like detective superintendent by now, Susie. I think I could. Yeah, I think I'm probably old, you know, to actually sort of be running, you know, <laughs> yeah. running the police by now. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think probably. Would you get the waistcoat back on? If asked, you know, would you? 
I might have to lose a few pounds first. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> but, but yeah, but absolutely, of course, you know, I'm sure we all would. But I mean, how many bill regulars have there been? And this is a serious question. How many bill regulars have there been since its inception to when it ended? Well, there, you... it, there must be around 150 regular cast. You know, there you must know, be. It's quite, it's quite a big sort of um, shopping yeah. mall to pick from that, yeah. isn't it? But, I mean, you're, you're probably in the top 20 in terms of episode numbers. I, I don't know. I mean, you, uh, you, you know so much more than I do. In 1993, they introduced eight new regular characters and you'd go on to be the longest serving of those. So, take a bow. I didn't know that. Mm. Yeah, I they introduced no eight. Idea. Yeah. Uh, you and Stephen Beckett went for Me five Stephen years. Beckett. Yeah. Me and Stephen Beckett and, and Ian Fletcher, we all joined at the same time. I think Clive yeah. Wedderburn came in shortly after that. Is that right? Okay. Um, came in i think just before but but the episode transmission order was all you know when people joined and when they were but then you you, you had someone like liz crowver come in do do a, a dozen episodes and then not have a contract like you know it was kind of cutthroat really or oh god yeah i mean liz crowther was fantastic yeah i mean really wonderful wonderful uh character yeah i didn't know i really didn't know that is that I think Lolita came in, I know, quite a way after, and so did Andrea Mason. But they, t yeah, I know I joined with kind of at the same time as Stephen Ian. I mean, I kind of basically I stepped into Martellas, uh, yeah. into Martellas. She's a, and you know, a, a really big role to fill because I thought she was, I thought she was a fantastic oh, character. Yeah. I would have liked to have worked with her. She was, I think she was there doing one of her final episodes as I started my one of my first episodes I only met her that once um, but absolutely what a lovely what an absolutely lovely woman and yeah. incredibly gracious to me you know I mean really really lovely woman big shoes to fill well you felt you filled them awesomely and like how, how do you feel about the fact that, that, that you know you still have fans who appreciate you and your work as Susie, all these years later. I hope you take a moment to feel proud. I, well, I feel blown away by it every, every time. Uh, still, now, I mean, I look at my son. He's a big, he's a big man now. <laughs> he, you know, he's a big man. He's 22. He'll be 23 in September. That's how long ago I left the bill. And people still um, recognise me. They still speak to me about it. They still contact me and I, it blows me away. I feel really flattered and really honoured and really appreciative of those people who, who actually have taken the time to, to say, oh, we love that programme or we loved your character or, yeah, I mean, it really touches me. It really touches me, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of people out there who would be very, very grateful to you for doing this. They can help support you in making accidental guru happen one tiny little positive thing that has come out of this whole covid situation is that i i can see a lot of helping hands in in our community of actors and creatives that people are trying it's pulling out people's creativity i think people are trying to come up with their own work create their own work and and include other people from the industry in it it'd, it'd be interesting to look back and go like wow would would we really have done that if this terrible thing hadn't happened i think it can bring out the best it can bring out the worst in people these kind of situations but i think it can bring out the best yeah. as well can't it? well we've all been listening to one of the best right now so <laughs> kerry Piers, take a bow I'm going to say it, legend. <laughs> I keep asking Oliver not to say this, but thank you to all of you out there listening. And um, it's really been a pleasure to talk to Oliver and to share with all of you guys who I do really appreciate. Thank you. My huge thanks to Kerry, an absolute triumph of a human being. I adore her and I'm sure you do as well. If you'd like to support Kerry's Accidental Guru TV pilot, they're currently in post-production and they're looking for some extra support. You can find the campaign on GoFundMe.com 
and the link is in the description of this podcast. Perks include getting your name on the closing credits of the pilot. If you're enjoying this Gold Dust with Kerry, well, you could have enjoyed it six months ago on Patreon because Sergeant patrons of the Build podcast get access to releases six months in advance. So right now, while you're listening to Kerry on SoundCloud, they're enjoying six podcasts in advance, including a special quadrilogy with the fantastic Ian Fletcher, a.k.a. DC Rod Skates. If you'd like to unlock over 50 hours of bonus content, including video commentaries of cast and crew, reaction and analysis videos, Misty Moon reunion highlights, there's loads on there. It will be wonderful to see you on there. Loads of chat and discussion between the patrons. I'm really grateful for everyone's support. That's patreon.com forward slash the build podcast. Right now, I'll hand you over to another Sunhill legend, Mr. Ben Payton, to read our closing credit to our inspector and chief super patrons, the co producer and executive producers of the Bill podcast. My huge gratitude to them. Now, I'll hand you over to a man who wakes up every morning with the sound of a gun barrel. It's Mr. 007 himself, the one and only Mr. Ben Payton. Hello, this is Ben Payton, and you have been listening to The Bill Podcast. Produced and presented by Oliver Crocker. Co-produced by Ben Adams, Sarah Kuyper, Alex Mockler, and Simon Wolfe. Executive produced by Glenn Allen, Ben Ashmore, Daniel Christopher, Alana Dewar, Andrew Dyack, Paul Dunn, Dan Evans, George Fairbrother, Stuart Gibbon, Aaron Gordon, Luke Hegarty, Edward Kellett, James Ledane, Lucy McNeil, Stuart and Jen Morris, Claire Norbury, Justin Pitt, Tom Sherrington, Angel Stannard, Patrick Stratford, Sarah Went and Michael Weil. Brought to you in association with georgefairbrother.com and Misty Moon Events. Signed copies of Oliver Crocker's book, Witness Statements, are available from devonfirebooks.com.